Good morning, Tehmina Khan is here, NTK Maths is fun. In today's video, I will explain to you a concept of Poisson distribution in which I will cover uh, how to calculate the probability of Poisson distribution and applying appropriate approximating distribution. So to explain this question or this concept, I have taken a question from CIE June 17, 72, question 6. This is a topic of A-level mathematics syllabus, S2, paper 7. From 2020, it has become paper 6. So before I begin, you can see on the top my website address, tkmaths.com, and my blog address, tkmathsisfun.blogspot.com. All my videos I have made so far, you'll find on my blog, as well as on my website. Website has many more information. Do visit it. You will find it very useful. It offers all uh, online help as well. So let's begin with the question. So I will explain at the same time. I will help you recalling what you need to know in this uh, question. But if you want to see, see in detail the explanation of Poisson distribution, I have made three videos and the link I'm providing in the description. So let's begin. The question says that old television arrive randomly independently. Now these two factors are basically conditions. For every distribution, there are certain conditions which are met. So at times examiner says state the assumption, state the condition. So randomly, independently, there are more conditions also, right? So old television arrive randomly independently at a recycling center. And the rate per day is 1.2. So that is your lambda for per day. You have to find the probability that exactly two televisions arrive in two day period. Now we know in Poisson distribution, we change the lambda interval depending the unit time given to us. So if per day it is 1.2, what it will be on two days, we will see. So this is the way we write the distribution of Poisson x represent the random variable in this case it is old television and lambda is the rate of per day here which is 1.2 but in the question we have to find out for two days so it will be double of it right it will be 2.4 and this is the formula we use e power minus lambda lambda power x divided by x factorial so for two days, the lambda is 2.4. So I'm simply plugging in the values because I have to find the probability for exactly two days. Probability of x equals to 2. So lambda is minus 2.5. x is 2. So I'm plugging in, in this formula and calculating it. So this is a simple question. Let's see the next part. Use an appropriate approximating distribution to find the probability that at least 55 televisions arrive in a 50 day period. So first of all, you will change your lambda. The given lambda was 1.2 per day and you have to calculate for 50 days. So your lambda will be 1.2 into 50 is 60. And at least 55 televisions mean probability of X greater than or equals to 55, right? Now, appropriate approximating distribution. You know, in your syllabus, there are three approximate distribution. And when you convert or find the approximate distribution for Poisson, there is only one, which is normal distribution in our syllabus, right? So to show that we can apply this appropriate approximating distribution, we have to tell the condition that it satisfies it. So we know in this case, the normal distribution will be taken as an approximation to the Poisson distribution. So the condition is that lambda should be greater than 15. Generally, this is said. So because my lambda is 60, which is greater than 50, yes, I will say I can apply normal approximation to calculate the Poisson distribution. Because you see what? If you see here x greater than or equals to 55, and there is no end limit in Poisson, right? So you cannot calculate, I mean, whenever you have to calculate the greater than, you always do one minus, reverse of it. So if I take X less than 55, 
less than 55 mean 54, 53, 52, 51, and go back till zero. Um, so do, it's too much work. So that's why approximation is used here. And we will see the condition it is met. So now we will see what will be my parameters. So it will be lambda, lambda. Otherwise, you know, in normal, what is this? This is your mu and this is your variance. So right now, lambda is your mu, mean, and lambda is your variance, which is sigma square. So after writing this distribution here, parameters, now you will apply the condition of the probability. It is saying P is greater than or equal to 55. Now, what did I write here? This is continuity correction. Why? Because Poisson distribution is applied for discrete data. It is applied on discrete data, whereas normal distribution is for continuous data. So now you are changing or making a bridge between continuous data and discrete data. So probability of x greater than and equals to 55 will become 54.5. Whenever we apply continuity correction, we add or subtract in this approximation 0.5. Either we add or subtract. Now, how do we decide we will add here or subtract here? I am subtracting here. So let's see how do we decide. Now, first of all, notice here I have written greater than. What did I write here? Okay, so this was a mistake here. I just realized I should not write this equals to here. Now, why we do not write equals to here? Um, because for discrete data, 55 is included. Now, you must have an idea of normal distribution here when we talk about the area under the curve, which gives us the probability. So it is, it is always a range above that or below that. It is not right underneath, right? That is a prerequisite knowledge, but still I'm telling you here that that's why we do not write equals to when we apply continuity correction but yes when equals to here or equals to not here that makes the difference on the value here but when we apply continuity correction we write just inequality without equals to so either we write um, greater than or less than whatever it is without equals to sign right so now let's see the understanding of this with the help of a number line. Now see here, when I say x is greater than or equals to 55, look at this red spot. It means I am talking about integers more than 55. So arrow is going here, right? So equals to mean 55 is included. It means 55, 56, 57 and go on. So that's why I have filled this circle. So this is called closed circle it means this number is included on the number line. Now, when we apply continuity correction, either we add or subtract 0.5. Now, see here. If I subtract 0.5, it will become 54.5. And because we don't write equals to, so it is an open circle, it means this number will not be included, but all the numbers on the right-hand side. So when it will, will, it will pass through here, it will include 55 in it. Right, when you will go from here, 55 will be part of the number. But if I add 0.5 in it, 55.5, and because there will be no equals to, it's open circle. And if I go on the right hand side, why right hand side? Because it is saying greater. So when I will go here, you see now 55 is not part of this number line. So that's why when I have here equals to, in my continuity correction, this number should be included in it. So that's why I'm saying from here, okay, 54.5. Uh, For example, just an extra information, then we will go back to the question. If question was saying probability of X greater than 55, right? And this was my discrete data. So now in the continuity correction, it means this red circle, which is open. So when you are going here, this is not included in the discrete data. So it means discrete data is saying more than 55, which means 56, 57, 58. So from 56 onward. So when you apply continuity correction, like I said, either you add or subtract 0.5. So 
So this time, because it is not included, there is no equals to sign, I will add so that I move on from here. When I will move on from here, then 55 will not be included. So that's why it will be 55.4. I hope it makes sense. So let's go back to the question. So the question was saying at least 55 television arrive, which means 55, 56, 57. So in continuity correction, I will subtract 54.5. Okay. So now we will calculate this probability because we are applying normal approximation, right? So we know z is equals to x minus mu over sigma. This is a standard deviation. This is mean. And we change our x variable into normal uh, variable. The reason is we can read the table then, right? Because we read table to calculate the probability. So x will change into z. And this is my x value. And what is my mu and sigma? 60, 60. We have seen here. Let me show you again. Here we have calculated, right? Mean is 60, variance is 60. So I'm substituting here because it is a standard deviation. So I'm taking root of it. And then I calculated it. I have to calculate the value of probability which for which z is greater than minus 0.710. Now, the uh, difficulty is here, the table provided by Cambridge and um, CIE exam in, in our exam does not have the negative value of Z, right? Otherwise, there are tables in which the negative values of Z are there. And the table always read the probability of the left-hand side of area, whereas this is telling you the area on the right-hand side. So now, if you see here, this is the meaning of this question. Because it is on the negative side, this is your uh, positive values of Z, and here is your negative values of Z. Okay? So now, this is means zero. Like I said, if you want to see the detail, you need to see the description uh, videos I am attaching in the description. Anyway, so because it is saying greater than minus 0 0.710, it means I'm talking about this area, this probability, right? Negative is on this side. And table cannot read negative value. So it means I will use the concept of symmetry. Now see this diagram. If I take the symmetrical value of minus 0 0.71, it will be on this side, right? Because this is a bell-shaped graph, symmetrical graph on the y-axis. So now if I take minus 0 0.71, this area on the left hand side will be equals to right hand side area. Agreed? So I can say that the probability of z greater than minus 0 0.710 will be equals to probability of z less than 0 0.71, right? So diagram is making sense of it. So I'm saying that this probability or this probability has the same value. So I will use this because the table gives me or read for me the values which are on the left hand side. Okay. So now the table, when you will open the table, this is your first decimal place. This is your second decimal place. And this is your third decimal place. Okay. So now, oops, sorry. So now first decimal place in the table is written here. The second decimal is written here. Third is written here, right? So when you see 0 0.71, it is written here, 0 0.7611. So probability is 0 0.7611. This table is start from one here. So my probability for this or for this will be 76.1% in three significant figure, right? Let's see the last part of the question. The last part of the question is saying, independently of televisions, old computers arrive randomly and independently at the same recycling center, and the rate is four per seven days, okay? So now, 
um, in my experience, when a student saw this question, they misunderstood this phrase. So you see there is comma. So it means that was the rate 1.2 per day was for television. And this is the rate for old computers, right? So what is the rate for old computers in seven days? Four computers, right? Four per seven day. Find the probability that the total number, now when we say total number, we apply the concept of linear combination, right? Where we add up independent, um, independent random variable we are adding up so total number of television and computers the important thing here is let me underline here is this arrive at the recycling center in a three-day period less than four so basically you have to uh, find out the probability for less than four and in a three-day period so what comes in your mind? The rate of television is given to you per day. The rate of old computer is given to you for seven day. And they're asking you total number in three day period. So first of all, you will adjust the lambda for each case. Okay. So let's see here. Because the television rate or lambda per day is 1.2. For old computer, it is four per seven day. And we have to change both to three days. So if I see three day, this is simple, right? Just multiplied by three. So it will give you the lambda for three days, which is 3.6. Now let's see here. If it is four computer for seven days, then for three days, how many it will be? So when you take it out, it is 1.714. Because question is saying total number of television and computer, we will add up these two values, right? So it is the sum of independent variables concept. So now I'm getting my lambda 5.31 for three day period. And I have to calculate the probability for less than four. So now this is what I have to calculate. And this is my lambda. Less than four mean x equals to 0, 1, 2, and 3. 4 is not included, right? There is no equals to sign. It is saying less than 4. It is not saying at most 4. So be very careful about wording. If the question says at most 4, then 4 will be included in it. Okay. So now you know the formula. I told you on the first page. Let me write it here again in case. So that was e to the power minus lambda. Lambda power x divided by x factorial okay so now i am my x is 0 1 2 and 3 so one by one i will apply all these values in the formula and then because e power minus lambda is same for each case so i have taken it out as a common factor right so it is e power minus lambda lambda power x over 0 factorial then e power minus lambda lambda power 1 divided by 1 factorial. So I've taken minus lambda common out. It's easy to calculate in this way. And then using calculator, you get 0 0.224 in three significant figures because it is the requirement, give answer in three significant figure. So with this, I will end this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have learned or liked, please press like button, subscribe button, and bell icon. And do share it with your friends. Your positive comments will encourage me to make more videos. Thanks a lot. Take care. Allah Hafiz.